Hello, good folks. How's everyone doing this beautiful evening? What's today? Tuesday? Monday? Tuesday? How's everyone doing tonight? Sorry to get off to a minute late start. Just had to get my coffee. Ooh, all right, today was a long day. A very long day. Working from home is actually uh, slightly more exhausting. I think I knew that. But um, yeah, they're bringing the, yeah, the blending. Like there's no clear distinction from one day to another. I don't know, you don't, you don't get that satisfaction of going like into the office and then actually completely separating from work and going home. What's up, FMOMO? What's up, 88 Opus? All right, trying to get myself together here. How's everyone doing otherwise? Good to see you as well. Let me see. I need to pull this. Hold on one second. Let me just pull this over. Got all the screens. And bring this back up and bring that back. All right. What's up, the cat was not. What's up, T Bell? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake myself up. I'm, I'm not sleepy at all, actually. I just been, uh, I've been looking at a bunch of stuff all day. Just uh, a lot of stuff going on, both with work and just, I don't know. I guess because everyone's at home at their computers. Uh, I got like an influx of emails and all kinds of stuff. So just doing all that. My mom's trying to figure out what we're doing for my birthday because that's really important to her. And I'm like, it's cool. We'll just chill. We'll be all right. We'll celebrate when everything's good. I'm going to be comfortable, relaxing, you know, playing some games, watching some movies. You know, I'm, I'm with my wife. Um, but uh, I think she wants, she wants to make something happen. So maybe we'll go visit. They've been stuck in the house and we'll submit. Maybe we'll go visit. We'll see. What's up, Afro Coder? How you doing tonight? But tonight we have the last, I guess, at, oh, man. My phone is always listening every time, every time. I don't know what I'm saying. That's getting, getting it to go off, but almost at the beginning of every stream, it kind of goes off. But this is the last of like the technical pieces of the DevOps Bootcamp. We made it through a ton. So let's take a look at it. Uh, we're going to be going into observability. So all the stuff that we learned so far, how do we look over? How do we see it? How do we get some insights from it? That's basically what observability is going to be tonight. Um, we're gonna talk about those different things. It's not actually much. Um, that's part of the reason why this is last as well. Um, it's not, there's not a, there's not a ton tonight at all. Um, we, there are a few slides, they're like six slides. So I'll share those with you in a little bit. Uh, but let's head over to the Academy website and let's look at all we've done. Let's also pull up roadmap.sh where we started. So we can see, oh, they've added, oh, okay. They've added way more things. This is nice. We'll have to run through these and see, uh, see what they have. Also, have a YouTube channel. That's cool. See, man, there's so much. There's so much content out here, which I love. Um, so many people are trying to share and do the thing. I love it. All right, so we started out going through this roadmap. We dove through a programming language, so we learned a little bit about Go. We dove through uh, some OS concepts, learned uh, Linux. And we started to learn different pieces of Linux, how to manage processes, how to do all that stuff. Talked a little bit about sockets, networking concepts, things like that. Uh, IO management, virtualization, we learned how to do that. Uh, we learned about memory and storage and file systems. Excellent. Um, uh, so we're, we're using Linux, this is not Mac. This is in fact Linux, it's Pop OS. It looks like Linux. I mean, it looks like Mac. Made it look like Mac just a little bit, but uh, it is in fact Linux. We also learned about server management. Um, we learned about a couple, we learned about, you know, different Linux distributions, things like that. Kind of how to move stuff around, how to handle files, learned a little bit about command line, like uh, got a little hands on with the command line, learned some simple stuff, command line navigation, managing files, editing text, things like that. Um, learned about the dis different distributions, uh, how to manage that, uh, learned some bash scripting. We did a whole lab on bash scripting. We also did, uh, we've done a little bit on Vim, we're actually gonna do a whole workshop on Vim, uh, not workshop, but we'll do a whole stream one day um, on just getting comfortable with Vim. Um, just because it's cool, people have asked me enough about it. But we learned all this stuff. We did some basics of networking, uh, learned different protocols. We know about HTTP versus HTTPS um, and some of these other ones, SSL, SSH, we've talked about it all. Um, 
set up a load balancer, you know, with Nginx. Talked about we set up reverse proxies as well. Talked about firewalls, web servers. We've 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 used Nginx plenty of times. We set up Apache as well. Um, so we've gone through all that infrastructure is code. So we did, in fact, learn Docker. We just got over the Docker piece. Um, we did learn a little bit of Ansible, saw how that worked, saw how we could solve problems using that. Same thing with Kubernetes uh, and Terraform. Did a lot of stuff with Terraform as well. Um, here's where we are. We're actually in the kind of in the middle here. So learn how to monitor uh, software infrastructure. So uh, tonight, this is the section that we're going to kind of be in. We are not going to dive super deep in here. Um, we're going to talk about what observability is, uh, how these different pieces kind of fit into it. We're going to mess around. Maybe we're going to like, so we used New Relic last time. Probably going to use New Relic this time. Uh, I might not have a free trial because I already used it. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll use New Relic. Like all these APM services, uh, application monitoring services are kind of the same data dog and stuff. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll mess around with that. We'll do some stuff inside of AWS with CloudWatch to, you know, learning how to monitor our software infrastructure um, and how to pull out data and how to make, uh, you know, decisions accordingly. We learned a cloud provider. So we learned, um, we dove into AWS a bit. And yeah, that was that was everything. Um, so you know, once we once we learn this piece today, that'll kind of be the full scope of things. Again, this is we, we this was an intro to all the pieces. Um, so there is a lot in here. So this kind of wraps everything up. The next week we'll dive into uh, you know how to get a job from this or like what 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 are the next steps? Uh, how can you dive deeper into each of the sections? Uh, we'll also be doing an engineering panel learning from people. So Sunday is when we'll be doing that. So tune in Sunday. We will have some DevOps engineers of varying skill levels um, to to get information from. You can come ask whatever questions you want. I will be running through questions, but come ask questions. We'll definitely be taking audience questions um, and then we'll learn about the DevOps interview process. All right. So APM is not monitoring. So APM is uh, APM is monitoring. Um, so monitoring is a lot of things and it's come on monitoring is in the name. Application performance monitoring is in fact monitoring. Um, it is not the whole skit. It's not, it doesn't tell you everything. So observability is actually going to be more uh, of everything. What we learned tonight is going to be more of how do you take all of these different things that give you a bit of information about how your infrastructure is working, how your applications are working. Um, you know, how do you get that insight? And how do you make decisions accordingly? Uh, uh, but APM is, in fact, uh, monitoring. It's not your traditional infrastructure monitoring like you might think of, like um, like maybe Prometheus. Prometheus does a little bit more than that, or like Nagios. Um, so application performance management, either way, um, it, it, are you sure it's managed, the image management? Even if it is, it still lets you know, it, it still watches and lets you know things like uh, like your CPU usage, like your, your resource usage, your, uh, it tells you metrics on a runtime, things like that. Either way, doesn't really matter. It's definitely a form of uh, knowing the statistics of the way that your application is performing. And that is in fact monitoring, but, um, Cool. Um, so let's, uh, and New Relic is right here in application monitoring is right there. I didn't put it there. It's right there, but I'm just messing with you. Okay. Um, let me get you the, just a couple slides tonight. Um, just to kind of highlight the differences between, uh, kind of the major concepts that go into observability. Um, observability can be a bit confusing. When I first heard it, um, I didn't really like, it is monitoring. It is logging. It's all this. It's all these things, but it's more so about insights, uh, being able to just know what's going on, especially in the landscape of the way tech works now. Um, yeah. So let me share this. Let's end with the link. Copy it. Let's get it on over here. Share it out. You can join in. And follow along for these whopping six slides. We're gonna do through these real fast, and then we'll get straight hands on. Like I said, we'll hop into AWS um, just because we've been learning some stuff with AWS, show you some of those tools. We'll talk about some of the other uh, tools that are available in the space as well. Um, and again, we're, we're gonna learn how to uh, set these things up and how to grab information and uh, make decisions with them. So let's go ahead and get started. Observability, I can see, I can observe. Um, so observability, what is, what is observability? In the world of software products and services, observability means you can, you can answer any questions about what's going on or what's happening 
um, inside of the system just by observing the outside of the system without having to ship new code to answer new questions. So um, this is important. The, the important piece of this is knowing what's going on, on the inside just by observing the outside. And that's, uh, you might ask, like, that's, that seems weird. You know, you're running things on servers. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of managed services now that we've learned about where, you know, things like S3 and RDS and like, how do you know those things are operating accordingly? How do you know that your application code is actually working properly uh, by viewing the outside, not being on, logged into the server and, you know, watching things as they run? How, how do you get that information? Um, and so there are many ways to do that, but Observability just means being able to view it from the outside uh, so that you know what's going on, on the inside. Uh, this helps a lot. This is a very integral part of the DevOps process or pipeline. Let me see, DevOps, uh, uh, DevOps pipeline loop maybe. Most of the like little infinity symbol loops for DevOps show um, show a part of like feedback. This. Observability is kind of that feedback. It's got monitor over here. You know, after you deploy it and operate, you have this monitor. Um, it's a major part of the feedback cycle to know how your systems are doing, know how your applications are doing, know how the ecosystem of things that you've created is doing as a whole. So it is a major part of this pipeline. Um, cool. That's, that's observability. Let's present some more. Monitoring. So monitoring is probably the first piece of of observability. This is probably what most people uh, are used to have kind of done something like this. But monitoring is a verb, so that's very important. Um, you know, you got the the, the ends in the ing. It's something that you do. Uh, it's something that we perform against our applications uh, and systems to determine their state. So, um, so yes, we'll, we'll dive deeper into that. So from basic fitness tests um, to whether they're up or down to be, to be more proactive, um, to more proactive performance health checks. So um, monitoring is the, is the act of gathering information about the status or the state of your applications, your systems, um, to know what's going on with them. Um, we monitor applications, detect problems and anomalies. So monitoring allows you to, um, to one, establish baselines. It allows you to uh, understand uh, what is happening with your application. Monitoring alone uh, generally won't tell you much besides um, maybe whether or not an application is completely up or completely down. Um, and obviously, you know, if something's, you know, at 100% usage or something, it tells you that you may need to do some more, but it doesn't tell you actually what's going on. It doesn't help you to be able to uh, solve the problem. It just lets you know that you do have a problem. Uh, and so monitoring, again, is something that we do continuously. It's something that you have to perform against those machines uh, to gather those metrics to know what's going on. So again, this is something that you've seen before. On the right, we have the little monitor for health monitoring, monitoring your your steps and things like that. Um, this is what we do to the infrastructure. And again, there's a lot of different metrics you can monitor. You can monitor things like CP, common things you'll normally monitor are things like CPU or things like um, a memory usage or things like network traffic and throughput and disk usage. Um, things like, you know, uh, you might be monitoring uh, parts of your applications, uh, how long the requests take, uh, maybe how many threads um, that thing is taking up. But there's a lot of different things you can monitor. But again, all those things on their own don't really tell you much. Another way, another way that we get insight. Another way that we get insight into our applications, uh, into our systems, and to know what's going on is logging. So, um, logging um, in a clear way, logging is just a fancy word to define the process of writing down everything that you do. So, logging is just a it's a it's just a manifest of the things that have gone on in the application. Um, you've you've probably seen these before. They uh, logs again. They're just they're the history of kind of what is going on, um, what has happened. Um, and these are these can be used uh, again to on their own. The the logs don't really make sense, but they can be used to discover anomalies. They can be used to discover the health, the overall health of an application to determine if there are issues, determine if things are running properly. Um, but that's all that's all logging is. Um, logging can get pretty complicated uh, in the way that you set it up. Uh, usually by default, um, 
uh, logs are kind of just thrown in a place for you to do whatever you'd like with them. Uh, they're generally hard, difficult to parse uh, to like make you know true understanding of um, because they're kind of written. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to do logging right, to be 100% honest. Uh, maybe one day we'll set up a logger, um, set up some logging classes and see how, uh, it, it's not difficult to set up a logging class, it's difficult to set up a good logging class and, and to know uh, how to give the right feedback in those logs, how to be how to log useful information uh, of the things that go on. Um, but yeah, just monitoring and logging are kind of the two big things. There's a there's a bunch of different things that go into monitoring. Again, there's infrastructure monitoring, there's application monitoring, application performance monitoring. Uh, and so that is the end of the slides, only because those are just the two main things that we're going to be using to have some observability. Uh, and the problem is everything kind of falls into this monitoring bucket. Uh, at least in my opinion, everything falls in the monitoring bucket. Uh, but there are different things that you can monitor. So we're going to hop in real quick and you'll start to see the differences between what you can monitor and you'll start to see how we can use that information to know what's going on. So let's hop into first we're going to hop into AWS and we are going to um, we're going to hop into CloudWatch. Let me get my two factor auth code in here. Okay. What's uh Fitzroy the hacker? -a? I think I got that right. Thank you for the four months. Appreciate you sticking around. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Good to have you as a part of the family. Uh let me see here. Sorry. This my mouse, my mouse, I'm struggling. Um Okay, so here's what we are gonna do. First, we're gonna this is a little bit more about AWS, at least this part in particular. Uh, in AWS, you do get some of these tools out of the box. Again, not you don't have to use these things. The, these tools are certainly not the best tools. Uh, but in AWS, because we've been working heavily with AWS, um, the services that are available to you, there are a few services that are actually available to you to work on your observability, to be able to look at your applications and your infrastructure from the outside to know what's going on on the inside. Um, and CloudWatch is kind of one of the main ones. It has a couple different things in it. So you can see over here, we have uh, logs. So we just, that's the second thing we just talked about. There's things called log groups where logs can go to for you to understand uh, what's going on. So these are from our um, Python lab. There's some logs in here from that. They stay around again for me to reference. Uh, they look crazy, but we did in fact get an error here that we could have used to make a decision to figure out what was going on. Um, but you do have that available to you. These things do need to be configured. You do not get them directly out of the box. Well, with these you do, but um, for most things you have to configure one of these log groups for it, but that's not important. Just know that you can get aggregated logs here. Um, and then you have metrics here. There's other stuff in here, but all we're working on right now are, metri are metrics and logs. So metrics are gonna be the things that you are monitoring about your infrastructure or about that, uh, about that service. And each different service has all kinds of different things you can uh, monitor or that or or metrics that it can that it can monitor uh, and that can give you information about. Um, so maybe we want to look at an EC2 instance. Um, hold on, let me uh, a little bit bigger. Why is there only a couple? Oh, billing? No, by service. Here we go. Estimated charges. That's fine. Um, but you can set up like graphs and all kinds of stuff. This is like really nice. Uh, I can find out like my estimated charges and things like that. Uh, if I want it for billing, I don't know why I don't see all the services that I care about, but, um, you can in fact set these things up and again, you can monitor different things. Um, so that's the first, that's the first thing. Um, let's talk about some of the other tools and some of the common tools that people use for the monitoring section and to get that information. Nagios. Uh, or Nagios, or I call it Nagios. Uh, Nagios is the OG. Nagios is equivalent to uh, Jenkins. We just we just did CI/CD. Nagios is equivalent to that Jenkins. Like it's old, it's tried and true. 
Um, maybe they've made some updates recently, but uh, people are kind of moving away from Nagios. Um, people people building new projects aren't really using Nagios because, again, it, it was built for a different time. And again, I'm sure they've done things to keep up, um, but, you know, it's there's still plenty of people using this. But Nagios used to be a great tool. Um, and may, like I said, may still be a great tool to uh, be able to configure lots of information about um, about your servers and your services and knowing what's going on. They had, um, they had a lot of different options for you. Uh, the setup was uh, the setup was interesting. Um, it wasn't super simple to get Nagio set up, um, but again, it, it would commonly be used to do infrastructure monitoring. So, I mean, it's still infrastructure monitoring. And so that would be, you know, hey, Nagios, let me set you up to take a look at this server, give me back metrics. If uh, the CPU is over 65% utilization for five minutes, go ahead and let me know because I know the things that are running on the server uh, should never take up more than 60%. Uh, so if it's over 65% for five minutes, go ahead and let me know, give me a warning. And if it's over 70%, give me a, uh, a critical alert so that I can then address that issue. These tools do not intervene for you. These tools do not, um, uh, unless you set them up to, uh, they don't they don't make decisions for you. They don't tell you what's wrong. They they take a look at the things that you tell it to take a look at. You tell it, you, you point it, you, you're pointing Nagios's eyes at the thing that you wanna see. Um, and then you can get that, you can get that information back and make decisions accordingly. Uh, yes, Nagios is used a lot in Knox. Um, Knox being network operation centers. So a lot of companies have these, uh, these tiers or, um, or these departments, uh, I guess, called Knox, um, who kind of monitor the network operation of the servers and things. The people kind of uh, sitting there, they're, they're kind of the, I would say the the old school non-software SREs. Um, I don't even call it old school, but that's just like, no one really has a knock. Most people don't really uh, claim they have a knock even when they do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty simple and it's rule based. You give it some rules and it responses. Uh, responses. It sounds like Zabbix is the same thing. I actually don't know Someone else told me about Zabbix. I've seen it pop up. I've actually not used Zabbix and I clicked it because someone else told me about it. Um, maybe we can mess around with Zabbix. I don't know. I don't know. Anything. I know nothing about it. But yeah, there are a bunch of tools out here. Um, it probably, yeah, I think I actually think it was you. Um, What's up, uh, iPhone fan five? How you doing tonight? Yep, stuck in the house. Um, Hopefully you can you can learn a little bit something. We're at the end of kind of our boot camp, um, end of twelve weeks. Well, this is the end of week eleven. Next week is not really any technical stuff, but uh, yeah. So we'll check out Zabbix. I'll check out Zabbix. Is that does Zabbix have any uh, like a free tier? If not, we'll check it out. So Nagios is one of them. Um, one of the more commonly used ones today uh, in today's times is Prometheus. Prometheus is nice. Uh, it, it extends that functionality. Again, it, you can use Prometheus for uh, pretty simple things, but it can get, uh, Prometheus can be used to uh, have greater um, features. And you can you can even see here just in the things that they're talking about here. Um, it is open source. Uh, you can contribute to it. Uh, you can mess around with it. Um, pretty, pretty simple to use. And maybe we'll set up with some Prometheus stuff as well, um, but it has alerting and things as well. Um, but yeah, Prometheus is 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 kind of the the newest open source hotness for I guess uh, for observability. Um, yeah, I, I, I this to, honestly this space to me seems to be a little underserved to be honest. Um, I would actually think that there would be more. Uh, kind of big time players here, uh, especially big time open source players. There are a lot of paid players, like specifically in the APM space. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess because I guess since, you know, cloud providers and even before that, like managed service providers will kind of set up their own dashboards and things. And because they would already be monitoring the infrastructure, they would extend that uh, infrastructure monitoring to you. Maybe that's why there aren't as many as I would expect. Um, but yeah, Prometheus is one of them for sure. Um, 
So certainly want to check out. Maybe we can do some stuff with that. I haven't done anything with Prometheus in a long time, but um, I do remember when I was using it, it was good. And I know a lot of people still use it now. Um, and then the, those are more for infrastructure monitoring. Uh, Prometheus has some, again, some some additional functionality that you can extend past that. Um, but the one we were talking about tonight is New Relic. Um, we'll probably use New Relic if I can get a trial, uh, get a quick trial key. Um, or there are other ones like Datadog. Datadog does a little um, more as well. Like they all kind of do more than just monitoring analytics. They're kind of, these are kind of the bigger companies in there. There's, there's a bunch more. Uh, Datadog 14 day trial. I think I've had a trial with both of these, but yeah, let's do, let's do Datadog. I don't think we did Datadog. I don't, I don't know if I've ever done anything with Datadog, to be honest, but let's see. I'm gonna get this, no credit card required, just what I like to hear. You all already know my email, so I don't mind that. Now we need an application. I'll give them, I'll give them all the right information. Maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll give me a call and maybe they'll, uh, next time they'll, I don't know, give us some cool stuff or something, I don't know. Sign up, maybe I already signed up, I don't know. Already register. I don't remember doing that. But uh, what about my personal account? Oh, actually, I wonder if I never used my trial. Like, I wonder if I never used it. Will it let me? We can get back to this in a second. Sign in with Google. Oh, so yeah, so I've never, obviously, I've never actually used it because it's taking me to the walkthrough thing. Uh, we'll hold we'll hold there for a second. Um, we'll hold there for a second. We need to spin up some, let's spin up some infrastructure first. Uh, yeah, let's spin up some infrastructure first. And maybe, let's go back and use our Terraform to do that. Um, excellent. We should still have some Terraform code set up. Let's go ahead and use Terraform to spin us up some infrastructure really quick. Um, and if maybe we'll check our Ansible as well and see if we can uh, uh, spin up some type of services on here as well. So let's head on over to our code base. Uh, SB, no, mastermind streams. I think this one's a little bit weird. Uh, let's go to Terraform. All right, so what do we have in here? Let's take a look at, uh, I don't care about TF states. We don't need a lot of stuff. Uh, but I wonder if this is gonna go to my other account. We'll, we'll check and see, it's not a big deal. Um, AWS S3 LS. This is going to go to the other account. I'll log into the other one, it makes sense. Let's go ahead and let's only spin up we do not need this Ansible control here. We'll comment this out. And that, is that not a comment in a, can you not comment in Terraform? Let me make sure, I have no idea. Terraform comments. Okay, cool. We'll block come. Well, I'll leave it like that. That should be good. It didn't change colors, so that was really weird. Um, but let's see. Let's go ahead and spin up. Um, let's not call it Ansible Web Servers. Let's set up an AWS, a single AWS instance, maybe two. Maybe we'll set up two AWS instances because that'll actually be a good thing to show you guys about. Uh, ooh, we should do. What we should do really quick is, so these these APMs, things like Datadog, things like New Relic, um, the thing, the reason why those are cool is because uh, they can do a couple of different things. They can they can look at your each of your individual like if I spin up two EC2 instances right now, they can look at your individual services and figure out what's going on in each of those and give you insights on specifically those things. They can also aggregate uh, your application. So let's say I have an application that's being fed off of nine different servers. Um, I can get the aggregated uh, information about how the, the application is performing. 
um, you know, kind of across those nine servers as well as dig deeper if I need to into what's happening on each of those. Um, maybe I think maybe we could put it on a couple of different servers, maybe set up a, a reverse proxy. We could just start hitting the endpoints or something. Uh, but let's keep it simple tonight. Let's do uh, observability instance. I don't know. That's sure. Um, the count is going to be, uh, let's see here. Escape. Let's see what's in our variables. Let's just make one for now. Let's start with one and we can add more using Ansible. I mean, using Terraform if we need to later. So let's call this observability one. Cool. We'll add some more later if we need to. So let's save that. Um, let's save this. I hope that still works. Um, cool. And let's actually log into the right AWS account because this is the wrong AWS account. So we can see exactly what's happening. Sign out. Sign in. Different account. Root user. All right. So I don't think I have any EC2 instances running currently over here, which I do not, or at least I don't in whatever Northern California. What, um, what US East one is where we're gonna try to put it, which is not Northern California. Remember, think about your regions and your availability zones. So all these things are still running, which are costing me money. So first we should probably, uh, Tear those down real quick. Um, let me do something. Okay, uh, let's do that. Yeah, let's do this real quick. Just so again, we're practicing what we've learned. And now you guys are starting to see all the stuff that you do. Um, yeah, what, what's Terraform? What is it, destroy? Yeah, Terraform, I thought I'd throw this down. Destroy. Let's get rid of all that stuff real quick. Save me some money. Told me it's gonna destroy all these things and it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna destroy all these things. And we can watch it. We can watch, oh, look at that shutting down. Look how easy that is. So easy stuff we did. So this is why infrastructure code is so great. We did all this stuff a while ago. Uh, we forgot about it. It sucks because now I'm going to go check my bill and I'm sure um, I owe some money now because I've these are these are micros. So maybe not um, let's see how much. Oh, I, I don't care. Ooh, look at that. OK. All right, no big, no big deal. That hurts, hurts a little bit, uh, hurts my heart just a bit, but all good, not, not a problem. Maybe, uh, maybe AWS is watching and give me some credits. Maybe I'll, I'll contact their support and let them know I was trying to teach people how to use your product. Uh, it's definitely mostly RDS. It's definitely, uh, I know that the RDS is there. Um, it's RDS is way more expensive. So actually, again, let's learn a little more about AWS. Uh, you can see the billing breakdown in here as well. Um, it says over here on the right, so it lets me know what uh, cost that is. So remember I told you the databases are super duper expensive or much more expensive than the EC2 instances. But I, I thought we spun up like a real small one. Do I, how many do I have? I should only have a single RDS. Is it that expensive? I don't, I don't think I knew it was that expensive. Mm, what size is it? Oh, it spun up, it spun up a, a R5 large. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know why it did that. Um, I, also, I also don't know what we spun this up with, but whatever, don't really need it. This final snapshot. No, nope, I don't need a final snapshot. Delete me. Type delete me into the field. Oh, I acknowledge, there we go. Um, 
Well, I'll let that go. I'll take care of that after. It's, it's probably deleting now, but it takes a little bit to get rid of an RDS instance. But all good, not a problem. You should clean up things when you're done. <laughs> Rip to your bank account. I, I'll be. I hope I'll be okay. Again, I'll just. I'll just. Uh, I got other emails. We just stop using this account and we'll go to a new one. No problem. But now nah, I'm joking. Net data. All right, I'll check out what's netdata.cloud. I like NetData's uh, website. This is cool. Installation. This looks really cool. I will I will check out NetData because I, I like their site. Roadmap. I'll definitely check that out. Put, let me put that in my Google Keep right now. Copy. There we go. Cool. I like that. I definitely like that. Uh, uh, up store. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. The AWS extent switch roles is, um, is nice. Um, so I do have that on my, I have that on my work computer because we do everything through, um, like we have like a management account and we have a bunch of different accounts that we go through. Uh, yes, the problem is not the problem. The only reason I'm not using that currently for this is because I actually, don't use this account for some reason though i had my keys set up on here um oh no no. the only reason we're using this account this was an account that i never used the only reason we're using it is because the day we started learning about aws i left my phone at home to get into my real account so i didn't have my two-factor off to get my real account because they like call you like the other options for them to call you and uh we ended up having to use my kind of default account which i don't really use um, so I just need to switch over, uh, but that is a good, uh, that is a good tool uh, to use that Chrome web thing so that you can switch stuff a lot easier. Um, all right, let me get my mouse back over here. What's from RDS? RDS is a uh, relational database service. It is, uh, it is, we were running a MySQL server uh, inside of AWS, a managed MySQL server, so we didn't have to worry about the management of it itself. Uh, we just had to, you know, take a take a look at the endpoint and put our database where we needed to put it. Uh, RDS is very expensive. One command install. I'll, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. NetData looks pretty cool. All right, so let's um, now that we've destroyed these instances, uh, let's let's uh, let's get back in here and again let's. Um, Comment these out. Oh, I messed that up bad. Undo, uh, undo, undo. We just want that. And down here, we'll leave that there. We can leave it called Ansible Web Servers. But over here, let's delete two of these. Uh, that back and let's call it again observability we'll call it observe web one all right let's see if that will work we're gonna apply our terraform code so we changed our stuff it's gonna let us know here that uh we're gonna go ahead and create uh, this instance, Ansible Web Server One, as a part of that group because I didn't rename the group. Um, it's gonna add one, no changes, no destroying. Yes, this will go ahead and give us our EC2 instance, and we'll go. We'll log in and do stuff manually. I'm not even gonna mess with Ansible right now, um, even though Ansible would work fine. <coughs> and we can go here and see it being created. It's pending. Um, hmm, what service do we want to use? Let's find. So maybe we'll do both engine X and maybe we'll grab. Maybe we'll grab some kind of free node or ruby app or hmm 
let's do a node app. There's just so many, there's just so many available like node apps on um, like no websites and stuff on GitHub. Um, they're so much easier to find because there's so many of them. Uh, how many servers? Just go to like five. No. What's your first goal with Datadog? To teach observability and DevOps. Whatever. I usually don't fill in any of that stuff. Uh, Datadog agent. Um, actually, I don't want to confuse you all, so let's stick to one thing at a time. So we got our server set up here. Um, excellent. This is all looking super duper nice. Uh, let's go ahead and get logged in. And we should have given it a key that I have, I hope, which is cloud. Um, so I think that's right. So let's get logged in here real quick. It does in fact have public stuff. Let's get uh, where are our keys located? They are in documents, AWS keys, and that one was called cloud. Uh, this is an Ubuntu server, I believe, if I remember properly. And we're using these protocols that we learned. We're, le we're using the SSH protocol that we learned previously. And we're gonna go ahead and get logged in. Boom, look at that. Uh, we get our message of the day here. And we can go ahead and just do a app update real quick, even though it's probably all updated, just to kind of get a standard setup here. Um, Relic's trying to get me to do stuff, send me messages. All right, so we have this set up. Uh, maybe we can do two different things here. Um, because they did have, you haven't installed any agents. Let's see. Ubuntu. Uh oh. Use one step install. All right. So I guess I can do this on. Let's see what this does. I've, I've never used Datadog before. Um, but we're gonna run through this to see what it does. It looks like, look at this larger, that I can install. So does it? Does this also do, does this do more than application monitoring? It must do infrastructure monitoring as well. This is whack. I don't I don't know if I like this. If you're upgrading to agents, if you're upgrading from agent 5.7. All right, I'm just gonna do what they say because I don't care about the server. I'm gonna paste it. So what is this command doing? Uh, this command is setting an environment variable called DD agent major seven, uh, major version is going to be seven. Uh, and then it's setting it, e um, uh, well, it's setting this equal to all of this. Um, and so it's going to, it looks like the curl command is going to download this script from GitHub. Um, and I guess it's in the bash dot dash C is going to run it. So bash is going to interpret that script. Um, but yes. Click Docker on the you can install system D or Docker. I could, um, but then I would have to manually get Docker and stuff installed on here. I could, wouldn't be too hard. Um, I don't really like ever using the package managed version of Docker for a number of reasons. Docker is cleaner. Um, but again, the, 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 I don't want to go through the official Docker installation just cause it's like six steps. Um, and again, the, sometimes I've, I've had personally, I've had issues with the package uh, the package managed version here. So, um, this is probably actually my key. Uh, huh. yeah, this is my key. This is probably unique to me. Probably shouldn't be showing that to you. Don't really care. We're going to get rid of this. Not a big deal. So it seems like it installed an agent onto my machine, which we can then, uh, just run. Start up this data dog agent. Um, how do we check let's, let's call back. How do we check that it's running? Um, we can do a PS AUWX and I have no idea what it's called, but it's probably called data dog. Um, I never remember how I, how do I do a pipe? I have a special keyboard. I, I, I know what a pipe is. I just don't, I don't know how to do it. Uh, we're going to grab data dog and see if we see it. What? Why did this change? I don't see anything running. Uh, maybe it's called. Oh, okay. I wonder. Let's see. 
see what it is running. Gross. Did I start it? Oh, I stopped it. That was dumb. If you were, I didn't read this. You should read. Don't do what I don't. Don't just freely do what I do. Pay attention to what you're doing. It, it says if you ever want to stop it, run this. So I, I ended up stopping it. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense uh, on why our PS command is not finding anything. But to start it, we do that. And if we do this again, now the data dog agent is in fact running. So don't do that. Don't don't just copy and paste willy nilly, even though you see me doing it all the time. And our first thing is reporting. Okay. <laughs> free, oh, there's a free plan. I was coming. This is just convert to our free plan here. Let's see what this does. Let's see if we get this stuff. It looks like because I signed up a long time ago, our free stuff expired. Maybe we can't even use it. Um, choose your plan. Select free plan. Confirm. We're downgrading from the trial to the free, even though we've never used it. Um, all right. So what do we have in here? Maybe we have some dashboards here. Maybe that looks that looks right. Turn my lights back on. All hosts. Okay, so look at this. We have a host that I believe this is, it has to be this. How can we confirm this? So uh, this it looks like a um, an instance ID from Amazon I zero C eighty eight thirty eight. Let's check and see if this is our same instance. I zero C 8838. It is in fact the instance it is now reporting to this application. This process, the process that we just did um, is very similar to how other um, how other report reporting tools work, how other monitoring services work. Um, some of them have agents um, again. Amazon services don't really need. They have a they have other things in place to do this, but usually you'll install some type of agent that will report information somewhere. So you can see here, uh, it's already reporting things like our system load and thing, you know, we got a bunch of different stuff here, our five minute average, or, you know, our 15 minute average, our memory breakdown, super nice. A lot of information Let's make this that's too big. Um, Look at this. You can see our process use usage, what things are using up our processes. So this is really nice. Um, cursor active. I don't know what this is, but again, that's data dog specific. I don't know what infrastructure is, but already um, we're, we're starting to get information. We're starting to get information about our server and about our services. And let's see, let's see if we can also set up something in uh in CloudWatch, and like I said, CloudWatch is not nearly as robust as this. Um, CloudWatch gives you some things that you can use, but it's not. Uh, CloudWatch is not amazing um, at all. Thoughts of Grafana and Prometheus? I think I think they're great. I think uh, Grafana and Prometheus are really good. Um, I think they're really good. What's up, uh, Doctor Buck Wild? You're not that late. We're 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 just messing around with some monitoring again tonight. Tonight's concepts are simple. Um, tonight's concepts are very simple, actually. So I go to this monitoring thing here, and so by default, it'll give us some CloudWatch metrics: CPU utilization, disk reads, disk read operations. Um, and again, it's important for you to see these things because none of these things tell you much on their own. You might see this network in line going up and you might be like, oh, is that bad? Like, is that good? CPU utilization is going up. Is that bad? Like, is that a good thing? Um, and again, it's just information and it takes time to start to understand how to correlate that information to meaningful action uh, to know that um, it, sometimes your server will, uh, maybe your site is responding with errors every so often. Uh, and it may, t it may take some time to realize that, hey, my CPU utilization looks good. It's down, you know, under 20%. And maybe my memory, memory is a special check in here. We, we actually don't get memory by default for, uh, for CloudWatch, unfortunately. Um, but you might look through those things uh, and say, you know, everything looks to be good, but then you may get to your disk read operations and you might see that like, 
oh man, like there's tons of disc reads that are causing problems. And now I know where my bottleneck is. Maybe you've been giving yourself a bigger server, but you've been giving yourself more CPU and more memory, but that wasn't, ne that was never the problem. The problem was your disc speeds. Um, and so, yeah, there's just, there's a, there's a ton of things to learn inside of there, but observability again to tie back is being able to get all that information from the outside um, and tools like this allow you to get those get those get that information from the outside without us having to log in again we are logged in we could find out all the information that we needed if we wanted to you know check load and we could see the load and what was running on here um so we can see that breakdown and memory and all that stuff. We could gather all that ourselves, but would you ever want to do that if you were running, you know, uh, 30 servers, 40 servers, hundreds of servers uh, or services? Would you want to do that? Um, would that be beneficial to you? Probably not. Um, and that's why this is so important in the DevOps game. So let's just see kind of some of the stuff that we can do here. So we're monitoring the host, uh, which is great. Let's see if we can get um, an application set up on here. Uh, and maybe get that, uh, start monitoring that. And maybe we can get a full picture of uh, what the differences look like between monitoring infrastructure versus those applications themselves. And again, I don't know Datadog at all. So we're just clicking through and we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. No agents reporting because, yeah, let's do Docker. That seems cool. No, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just trying to get back to storage category, APM, new monitor. Maybe that's what we want. That feels right. What's up, the extreme two? Welcome to the channel. Good to have you. Uh, email because I am scumming to volley guy. I mean, email notifications are nice. I tend to ignore them. Um, yeah, I tend to ignore them. So, uh, thing about good thing about a lot of these tools, they all have kind of integrations uh, into a lot of different things. Um, so things like Slack, uh, we actually get alerts straight to our Slack channel. Um, you know, things like uh, like even AWS's uh, CloudWatch can do that, and it's a, like I said, it's a pretty simple tool. Um, but they have they have different ways of alerting uh, alerting you. Uh, they can send stuff to other tools that do a little more robust things uh, if you need to. Um, it's, it's all a wild, it's all a wild world. So let's see service category. Um, let's see. Oh, APM right here. This should give us service tracing. Host based container based. Um, data dog agent on the same host as the application. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Let's grab a node app. Install the JavaScript client. So here's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to grab ourselves a quick, uh, we're gonna get Nginx installed real quick, just so we can all access it. Because again, if you want something to serve over the web, you need to be able to, uh, you need to have a web server. Um, I mean, the node itself has its own server built in, and we could probably just use that, but I don't want you to have to type in a port number. Um, so we're gonna just do some port forwarding. Um, so to, to, to get this to report, we have to go ahead and install a package into here um, in our code base. And it looks like we have to add some JavaScript code to get it to work. That's interesting. She is using JavaScript. Can I put this anywhere? This line must come before or any instrument and module. We'll see if we can get this to work. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Um, cool. Let's see if we can do it. Let's grab a JavaScript app. Um, GitHub, uh, best job, best Node.js, uh, websites, GitHub. Let's do that just so we can have a, an actual thing that we can see that we can mess with. Keystone, open source framework for developing database driven websites. I don't like anything that's possibly gonna need a database, which is gonna be none of these CMSs probably. I don't want. Uh, blogs are probably gonna need that as well. Time off management's probably gonna need it. Maybe it won't though. Maybe it won't. Let's see, time off management. What do you need here? Okay, okay. 
What's up, Coast to Coast 04? Welcome to the channel. So good to have you. Glad everyone's tuning in on uh, on this time when we've all spent so much time at home. Um, I'm, I'm glad people are uh, wanting to learn, wanting to, to, to check some of the stuff out. So cloud hosting. All right, cool. Let's 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 do this. This is how you self host it. We'll see if we can get that running. So let's go ahead and try to copy this down to the server and get everything installed. We're going to do stuff manually right now. So CD time off management and we're going to do an NPM install. Uh, so I probably don't even have node installed on here. Uh, okay. Apt install Node.js to get Node.js installed. Ah, uh, I, I feel like no, I feel like JavaScript. Uh, I feel like Node always has problems with packages on Ubuntu servers, but we will try to get it working. If not, we'll switch over to like Docker or something. Um, but what we can do in the meantime, get on over, get on over. What we do in the meantime is I'll give you, let's make sure the uh, security groups are open. You all can start hitting the server uh, if you'd like to, so that we can start seeing a change in what it's reporting. Uh, as you all are hitting it, uh, hitting this URL that I'm gonna give you as soon as I update the security group, um, we'll be able to see those things change in not real time, but almost real time. They've, they've gotten a lot better. Um, what can I see? Um, 80s open, perfect. 80s open, let me give you this URL. You should be able to just type this in and nothing, actually nothing, nothing will happen because I have no way to get to it. Um, let's go ahead and give you a way to get to it first. And install Nginx. I think every time we've done that, it immediately started the service. Okay, it's already running. If we refresh now, we got ourselves a good, good old web server. Let's head back over. All right, so you guys can start hitting that uh, endpoint right there. Um, you you might take it down. You might overload it. It's fine. Um, but we should start to see um, dashboards over here. We should start to see CPU go up over here in the monitoring section of this. Uh, and we also should start seeing things go up for uh, our infrastructure here. As people are hitting it, we may not have enough people. Well, well look at that, look at this little spike here. Uh, that's probably when I was installing stuff. Load is still pretty low, well below one. Look at this, uh, a CPU idle, okay. Yeah, there we go, we'll see some We'll make the lines move a little bit. Um, this latency, that's me installing stuff. So that's why the this latency went up again. These are all things that don't mean anything by themselves. Network traffic layers. But, you know, once you uh, combine this information with other information, like like combine it with logging. So um, Nginx has logging. Uh, so if we do something like tail dash F slash var log. Uh, Nginx uh, access log. Uh, as people are hitting the site, um, I should be able to see, um, you know, some logs coming through uh, and just kind of adding on as people are refreshing. Um, people are refreshing there. Um, but I could use this information. You can see how these logs don't really tell us much. They're kind of giving us headers, uh, response codes, and things like that. Um, Interesting that 304 is, I guess that's interesting. Um, 
But you can take this information that comes out of things like this. Uh, maybe this was having problems and I went to the error log and there are any errors right now, so it's not gonna show us anything, but I could time up, you know, the spikes that I see over here um, with those logs to find out maybe exactly what went on. Um, or they could tell me, uh, they can give me a full picture of kind of what's happening within the servers inside of stuff uh, as well. So we got ourselves a little web server set up. Let's go ahead and set up an actual application that we can monitor. Uh, again, APM, I thought it stood for application performance monitoring, but someone said management. Um, I don't really know. Actually, let's Google it. I don't want to be wrong. Uh, so I don't, well, if I'm wrong, I don't want to keep saying it wrong. What does APM stand for? That's not what we were looking for. Um, I'm going to type in, here's what we're going to do. Application performance. Ah, okay. M management comes up first, monitoring second. Eh, so, okay. Um, but if I do, what if I do monitoring now, what comes up? Okay, cool. Um, did, didn't really give me the answers I was looking for. Um, but either way, uh, APM is going to allow us to uh, not so much care about the specific uh, information about the host that these things are running on. It's going to let us dive deeper into the way that our applications are performing. And this APM, uh, so this is not, this is, do not take this as cut and dry facts. Um, this is just a general statement to kind of show the differences between uh, kind of the infrastructure monitoring space and the application monitoring space and kind of uh, where that role lies and who focuses on what. A lot of times uh, teams are just going to have a DevOps engineer who's, you know, responsible for all this stuff uh, and you'll kind of do both. You'll probably be responsible for making sure you understand what's going on with the infrastructure as well as the application. Um, but uh, in the in the big picture, the the people who care more about the infrastructure things, who care more about uh, the actual infrastructure itself, uh, are generally the SREs, so the site reliability engineers, uh, your systems administrators, uh, people like that. Uh, DevOps is ideally, ideally not. This is not true across the board at all. It's probably not even true in a majority of instances, but what a DevOps engineer uh, cares about, um, the kind of the job of a DevOps engineer, it's supposed to be to enable uh, faster development, you know, through process, through pipelines, through automation. Um, and that's where the insight to the infrastructure matter, but the, the insights into the application uh, matter a little bit more. Um, and that's specifically because your job is no longer uh, supposed to be about just the infrastructure itself. Uh, the product really is the thing that you care about. Um, and knowing how it works, you know, through APM, understanding how the application is performing is pretty important. Again, like I said, that's not true. Most people on here who have the DevOps title uh, probably don't care about a lot of the stuff that happens in here. Um, but let's take a node application real quick. We downloaded it here and we install node. We need to install NPM. Actually, do we? Does it come with this? Yeah, we do. Um, NPM is node package manager. So it's going to help us install all the dependencies that whatever this site is needs to run. It's probably a ton of them. Uh, would you use log management for Splunk? Uh, so we didn't talk about uh, Splunk and some of the other like uh, Grafana and stuff, but there are, uh, remember how I told you uh, logs and things like don't give you information kind of right out of the box. There are tools available like uh, like Elastic Cache and Elastic Search um, and Splunk and Grafana and a, and, a, and a bunch of other things that basically can aggregate this data for you, uh, help you discover anomalies, help you um, help you see trends a little bit better, help you see these things a little bit better. They give you the tools to make decisions. They give you visuals. They give you lots of different things. Um, they take in all the information uh, and they help you uh, kind of parse out that data, help you understand what's going on. Um, so there are tools like that. We're, we don't have enough time to dive deep into how those work. Um, I really actually wanted to do um, 
I really want to do a Splunk. Like I, I want to, I like Splunk. Uh, it's overkill for most people's what most people need. Uh, most of us need kind of to just practice on a daily basis. Uh, a lot of you know bigger organizations use Splunk, uh, but I would like one day like to go through that to kind of see how you can start to consume these things, consume this data, aggregate this data. I was going to do a little bit with something called uh, Paper Trail, um, because it's simple. I was trying to think of things that were relatively simple. Uh, this is a little bit. Uh, this is an aggregator, a log aggregator. Um, it, it doesn't do a lot of basically just puts all the logs in the same place for you So you can send logs from a bunch of different places to a centralized Location uh, and it gives you some tools and things to be able to parse those things and to be able to search through them easily um, And it's probably more since the last time I used it uh, Search it and all kinds of stuff because again logs can be hard to parse like we were looking through the access log um, and what if you were looking for specific information? Uh, there's definitely an art. You got to learn a fair amount of, of of cool Linux commands to figure out how to, you know, break down the information you want, find the information you want, um, especially when the logs are are large. Like this is a very tiny log. Remember the log the logging platforms. They they for the most part they write down uh, everything that they do. Um, so that can be a bit cumbersome. Are people getting four all for the favicon okay no problem so did we get node installed i think we got node installed so now we're gonna do npm i mean we got npm installed what is this what is this called on? let's do it npm install whoops whoa everything Hold on, hold on, hold on. N P M. All right, so all this is going to do now is again, this is a node thing. Um, not important that you know this, but there are. But I'm, I'm following what they're telling me to do uh, to get this running. Um, in Node, in in most pro in a lot of programming languages, uh, there's going to be a bunch of uh, dependencies you need to get that thing to run. Uh, in Node, in JavaScript, uh, there is this package.json that has all the things you need. So uh, it's installing all these things plus all the things that these things need, which is kind of annoying. Um, so it is going to end up downloading a bunch of stuff for us before we get going, which is a bit annoying. But it's fine. I hope it doesn't give me any weird errors in the end. Okay, that's good. These are, I know it may look like errors because it says warning, but this looks good. So we've got all of our, I believe we have everything that we need installed. Uh, and then we can just do NPM start. Um, and so it's gonna run, I believe, just fine. We actually can't access it from where you are. Um, you can't access it because Node uh, actually runs on port 3000 instead of port 80 or, or Express does. So this won't come up. If you did do, if I open up port 3000 and we went something like this, you would be able to get to it. And I can do, I can do that for a second. Uh, but we have Nginx installed, so we'll just uh, forward that to port 80 or, uh, or proxy it to port 80. Um, Alt. What happened? Why didn't it take me to the actual security group? This is this one. This is the default VPC. I think this is the one that it is. Details. Let's go ahead and add an inbound rule just to show you that it probably works. I'll allow everybody save rules. If I now go to it, if that was the right security group, there we go. So it does in fact work. I opened up that port. You can just tack on colon 3000 
and it will go ahead and it would uh, log in for you. And so this is also, you can see logging is happening here as well. I'm getting 200 responses. We talked about server uh, or HTTP response codes. 200 is good. 200 is what you're looking for. If you all were to, again, hit that, uh, if you were to hit this, I can see people starting to hit it now. Um, you can, in fact, get to this application. Back over. You can go there and it will, uh, it should load up for you, no problem. How do we log in by default? Does it tell us? I do actually want to log in. What's up, uh, Volpony, Volpony121, Ponil? Welcome to the channel and whoever just joined it, look like your name was different. Um, maybe not, maybe that's who just joined, but welcome to the channel. So glad to have you. Um, all right. So let's go back to tell us how to log in the first time. Run tests. It does not. Do you just have to like register new company? Oh, okay. Well, we'll use this in a second. I'm going to uh, spin this down. So you know, yeah, people are hitting it. There we go. So we're getting some logs here. Uh, 304s um, are basically telling us that 304s are our cache data, right? Um, I never remember. HTTP 304, pretty sure that says it's giving you cache data. Not, oh, not modified. Uh, yes. No need to transmit the requested resource uh, because it's cached. Yep. So that's good. So because it's already cached that data, we're getting some, some good stuff here. So, cause you guys are hitting that, uh, this is still gonna be the infrastructure. I'm assuming you guys are doing something to the server and we should start to see an uptick in the load and the load was be below zero. So we see the load is popping up a bit and we're still waiting for the rest of the data to come through. Um, this usage went up a little bit cause I installed some stuff, uh, but pretty chill. But again, this doesn't tell us a lot about the application itself. Um, and so let's, let's see if we can get that set up. Node. It said we need to first do this, which is going to give us a new, uh, NPM package here. So I'm actually going to shut it down. It's actually off right now. Uh, so if you try to hit it, you will, it will not work. We'll save this. All right, so that's good. Um, instrumentate, instrument your application. I don't know what this means. Instrumentation describes how application sends traces to APM. We support major frameworks, so do I need to do this? Uh, I need to put this somewhere. All right, I'm just gonna throw this into the place my application starts. Uh, the way that I know my, like the way that I know where my application starts because this is a node. Um, one, I can look at this, usually it's either like an app that JS or something. So there's an app.js here. That's probably where it starts. But I could check out that uh, package.json to know for sure. Maybe, maybe actually. Where are the scripts? Scripts, npm start goes node bin dub dub dub. Okay. So, um, bin. Oh, this is a. Uh, all right. So maybe I can just, maybe I can put it here. I might have to put it in my app.js. I actually think I do have to put it in the app.js and not here, but we'll see. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in the app.js first because I think this actually just instantiates the app here. Yeah, I'll put it in the app.js. Um, feels more correct. Uh, it's weird that it's right there, but whatever. Right, sir. And did I have to actually to instrument using TypeScript? Uh, oh, and then I guess I could tell it some services. Let's see what comes through by default. Enable app analytics, not tracing is enabled. A few options to enrich the quality of your traces. Um, 
this parameter, I'm gonna just let it go first. Let's see, I might not even need it to do this. Uh, part four, not sure since name. we have a few options. Uh, let's see. What, why did it take me back here? All right, well, let's just see what happens when we start this up now. So let's do uh, NPM start. Uh, I'm gonna start in the background. Ampersand, um, so that stays up. If we go to it now, I don't think this is enough. It should still be here. All right, let's register our company real quick. Well, that's not okay. I have caps lock on. All right. Give a short password for so I don't forget. This has a lot of stuff. We're in Brazil. How about that? Great. Okay. You know, it's time off calendar. What is all this? Cool. Pretend it's an email. Okay. So that's just giving us information about what happened. Um, so pretend to send us an email. Uh, so let's see if it's reporting anything at all yet. No services reported. Yeah, I wonder if I do have to do all the instrumentation stuff or if I just have to give it a few more minutes. Did it. Um, did it. View service list over here. And they don't tell us. App analytics can be enabled globally for all the web integrations with one configuration parameter in the tracing client. Uh, I don't know enough about JavaScript to know this, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw this in app.js as well. Environment variable you can also use the following parameter. Okay, let's do this as well. After enabling the app analytics UI starts showing results. Okay, let's copy this. It says we can use a environment variable instead. So first, let's just see. I'm assuming this is not a thing right now. So echo, obviously, um, makes sense. Copy this. Let's uh see that should be stopped now. Jobs. Okay. Um let's go ahead and set that environment variable. And let's start that back up again. And let's see if that works. You app analytics, and I guess it'll take me back here. Start your traces. Whack. Services. App analytics. Let's go ahead and hit it a couple times. Oh. Okay, never mind. It's 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 here. I don't know when that started showing up, but it's not showing up in the new things, but it's here. So uh, why are there two? Time off management is the express request. Okay, and what's oh FS operation? Okay. All right, so this is this is the file system operations on here. So here we go. We we did in fact get this set up. It may have been set up before we did the tracing thing, uh, but that's fine. But check check out the differences in the information that we have now that we did not have before. So before 
we're looking at things on the infrastructure like CPU usage and memory usage. Now we have very uh, granular things about the application itself. Uh, how long the requests are taken or how many requests there are. So this is 0.1 requests per second. Uh, again, start hitting, start hitting that and let's see if it goes up. I'll hit it a couple times. Um, uh, where is it? I lost it. I lost it. Time off. Oh, it's here. Hit it a couple times. Look at team view. Employee. Let's see if we can get it to go up to like one a second instead. Close all these extra tabs. And again, it takes a little bit because it's it's also processing the data as it comes in real time. Uh, so, but you can see the latency here. So how long these things are taking, uh, how many errors you're getting. So that's very important. Um, you know, you, you may want to have metrics where you, uh, key performance KPIs or key performance indicators that, um, you don't know, say that your error rate needs to be below 5% or something. Uh, the error rate again can, can give you immediate, uh, understanding that there's something going on somewhere. And then you have to use the tools that you've set up, uh, you know, as a part of your observability stacks, you know what's going on. The interesting thing is usually um, what makes you what, what this stuff really does help you to be great at your job. If you are the only DevOps engineer on your team or your small team kind of managing a lot of infrastructure, spend the time, take the time to get this piece set up. It takes a while, takes a lot of tweaking because it, it you almost have to start to have problems to start to know uh, some of the things that in your specific use case, you need to be paying attention to, you need to be monitoring. Um, and so you'll probably go through, like you, you probably run into problems first, um, before you know everything you're supposed to monitor. There's obviously the common things that you kind of want to take a look at first. Uh, a lot of things that they give you right out of the box. But again, after that, it's, it's, it really gets broken down into lots of different things so that you never actually have to, um, you know, log into your services or check out your services. Like currently on uh, my project, we don't, we actually don't even have the ability to log into any of the servers. We don't care. Uh, we have availability to see uh, from the outside, which instances are having errors uh, with the tools that we're using can also help out with things like that. Uh, we can check out what's going on with the application and decide to take action accordingly, all from the outside, which is the goal. Again, that feedback cycle, that feedback loop, um, of, of deploying and understanding uh, how the changes that you've deployed are affecting the system, uh, how, how the users are responding to those things, uh, being able to take that information in, uh, make changes, uh, and, you know, make changes accordingly, put forth uh, solutions for things to make things better, uh, and then start the process over again, iterate through that process. Um, but yeah, you know, monitoring and logging observability is super important in there. Um, I, I like Datadog's UI. You'll see me wear a Datadog shirt fairly often. They've also, just like Circle CI, they've given me a few very comfortable shirts from um, from conferences, from various conferences. So that's pretty cool. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool being able to use them for the first time. I like that they have a free tier. Maybe I will actually start using them for, I don't know, my I guess my site now. I wonder if they have anything for, my site's not really an application and I don't actually have any infrastructure. So, um, serverless maybe. I don't, it's not on functions. Like, can I stick something like for HTML? I don't know. I don't really need it. I don't really need it. Oh, but I wonder since we added tr that tracing stuff, I wonder if it has some, uh, Ah, yes, I guess that is why we got some of the extra stuff. So that's very interesting. Like this is, this is a lot of information. Um, a lot of information that I can't tell you how to make sense of it because again, it, it's all just tools to get to end state. Uh, let's see, I feel like all this will be so useful for the engineering team, but nobody will let, yeah, take the time to implement it. Yes, again, it is, we did this pretty fast, but like our application is, we don't even really have an application. Um, they, these tools try to make it easy for you to start getting data. And again, that part's the easy part. Uh, learning how to understand that data is the important thing. Um, 
yeah and it's great because this stuff is sometimes historical like i've seen problems where you know the right um the right setup of logging and monitoring can actually help you go back uh in time to like figure out uh like an occurrence that happened you know a long time ago uh you didn't notice it to be a uh it was an anomaly but you didn't know it to be a system problem, a, a recurring system problem, because it happened so long ago, hadn't happened since. Uh, but maybe something that occurs every six months because it's a very something very specific. And being able to go back and kind of crunch that information to make decisions as well is, uh, is I've, I've seen that happen a number of times, actually. That was pretty interesting. Um, can you put something simple that might help uh, so that we'll start demonstrating benefit that might let you put more time into it. Oh, okay. Then we got some Dr. Buck. Wow. Um, so I wonder what would happen if we now like, let's see. So it looks like you set up some monitoring. Uh, and so this is a part of your observability stack of, um, um, the, the, the monitoring is against monitoring. What do we say it was? It was a verb. It's something that we do. So although we're gathering metrics, we are not actually monitoring anything because we are, uh, uh, we, we're not doing anything with it. Uh, it's just, it's being, currently being collected. Um, here, is, it looks like a monitoring section where we can decide to trigger alerts based on information. So um, let's see if we can set up, can I just set up a new monitor? So let's say maybe let us know when a metric, like select a metric. Uh, data dar dog agent is running. from this host uh average i don't know what i'm simple alert so i want to know when it's running or when it's not running we'll go we'll, we'll go we'll go with, we'll define this metric i don't really know arithmetic uh do they have a boolean value here that i could do Suggested uh, count. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> um, I wanted to see if I could set up one for the metric of this not being running. Maybe we shut it down. It would alert for us. But again, that is that monitoring. That is the uh, the action that we're doing against it. It's something we're doing against it. We are looking for specific information. Uh, we are watching for specific information for specific conditions, for specific states. Uh, and we are being told about those things when they do happen, which is, uh, yeah, that is something you can do. That's what most of these applications do. That's what's good. When you hear about those people, uh, and a lot of people in DevOps will probably tell you, you talk about their own call and, uh, and you know, getting alerts and things from these things all through the night. Uh, that is that monitoring. Uh, we don't have anything set up here. Uh, the same thing is available also in CloudWatch. Um, CloudWatch alerts uh, are a thing, or alarms are a thing. You can also set these things up. Um, CloudWatch is nice because CloudWatch is nice inside of AWS because even if you're not worried about your services, even if you're just learning AWS and not worried about your services, you can set up billing alarms. So I could set up a CloudWatch uh, billing alarm to know when my um, to know like when my account is you know uh, past. $30 um, and I can take action to know that my stuff is set up. If I had properly set that up here, uh, I would not have a $150 bill right now, but I do all good. I am going to message the support just to see, just cause I don't, I don't want to pay it, but I'll pay it. It's not a big deal. Um, and then after I pay it, I'll see if they're trying to give us some credits. I want some AWS credits uh, so we can do some real cool stuff. Like I want to be able to do some, like I want to be able to do a lot of stuff for like EKS, like do a whole series on EKS, but EKS costs just like, just the control plan costs like $150 a month just to run. And that's fine. Like, but I, don't, I mean, if I don't have to pay $150, I won't pay $150. That'd be super nice. I don't know, I could spit it down afterwards and I could use these tools in the way you're supposed to. But on top of that, I'm a little bit lazy and I'll be forgetting stuff and all that. What's up, uh, SP33KR433K? Hey, good to have you. Uh, but 
Does anyone have any questions about about that? That's why I, I told you guys like weeks ago, and I've been saying ever since, like this part was relatively uh, simple, um, kind of boring because there's there's the concepts aren't difficult. We've been focusing on the concepts. The concepts of observability aren't difficult. The, the only thing you really need to know about this is observability means you can answer questions about what's happening on the inside of the system by viewing what's on the outside. And again, those things on the outside are those monitoring and logging tools you can use to gather information. Besides that, I can't really teach you how to learn how to make uh, decisions accordingly. Um, those are that's why people pay for experience uh to again to be able to identify you know your issue is not disk space it's iops or your issue is uh yeah it's cpu but it's because your application has uh you know this this problem because i've cross-referenced it with the apm and look at what you have going on here and actually the application is uh, giving errors because your servers are fine, your services are fine, but your database doesn't have enough throughput or something like that. Um, network traffic, things like that. Oh, we're getting DDoSed. Uh, being able to see that early through through some of the monitoring that you're getting. Um, yeah, that's, that's all it is. Does anyone have any questions about any of that stuff at all? Or anything else? If not, I'll let everyone uh, go pretty early tonight. But um, yeah, does anyone have any questions about that? Mm, I'm trying to think I feel like I'm missing something here. I would, if you're learning in the cloud, uh, I would dive into CloudWatch. Uh, CloudWatch. Uh, it has other things in there. Again, CloudWatch has a bunch of crap in here, like rules. So like there's like cron, you can set up crons in here. So you can set up things to be like kicked off automatically uh, on a time basis. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of extra stuff in here. But uh, these are those billing alarms I was talking about I can create um, to let me know once I get over a certain amount of money. But yeah, does anyone have any other DevOps questions or any or any questions about the things that we've gone over over the last 11 weeks? Because again, this is the last like technical piece of the things that we've covered. We've now um, uh, have gone and gone through all this. I would take some time. Um, you know, as you're trying to learn this stuff, all the purple uh, check marks are the things that this person recommends for you to learn. I actually agree uh, with most of these things. Some of the things are a little extra, like Elastic Stack, uh, I think is a little large for someone to try to learn on their own. Uh, but all the rest of the stuff, uh, for the most part, are things uh, you can check out. I checked out Jaeger a bit. It looks pretty cool. Jaeger is cool because it is written in Go. Uh, and again, most of the DevOps stuff is, and you guys know that I love Go. Um, but yeah, this is for tracing. Um, I'm actually going to be using Jaeger. And if anyone wants to come to uh, GopherCon in June, if it's still happening in June, uh, we're going to be talking about tracing, uh, performance monitoring, figuring out how to, you know, profiling, things like that. We're, we, we're probably going to use Jaeger to do some of that tracing, even though there is some built in tracing options to really learn how to, uh, uh, make your code more efficient. That's cool. Um, uh, what else is on that thing? Uh, Volter. I don't uh, Let's check that. Let me check that out real quick. That's interesting. This person must not be from. I bet this is not in the US and I bet they are not in the US. Because I've seen a couple other things on here that no one else talks about here. Uh, where can I find? Where's the about contact? I gonna yes. There we go. Oh no, New Jersey. Hmm. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm just lost. That's interesting that that's on this list though. But also on this list is uh is what's that place called? Digital Ocean, which is fine. That's not really, Jersey is a strange place. That's not really a thing I would recommend learning. Where where did I go? There's a road, all right, here we go. Oh, okay, never mind. I didn't see this split off here. I was like, cloud providers, Digital Ocean, that, I, yes. So these are more of, yes, these are cloud providers, but uh, these are like, uh, 
their VPS providers who have added some cloud functionality uh, to compete with the people up here. Um, I like how you like grayed out Alibaba Cloud. But yeah, run through this list, uh, figure out what you felt like you were. So here's what I would do. Here's what I would do if you if you've gone through this whole thing. Uh, you've gotten to this point. I would actually run through, uh, think of, or really think about the things that we've learned so far. Uh, look through this list. I would dive into again. You only need to focus on the major middle concept, not all the tools on the outside, but these major middle concepts here. As you kind of go through, they used to be numbered. I don't, I don't know why he removed the numbers from them because it's a little bit harder to follow without it. But the major line, not the dotted lines, the thick blue line is kind of what you want to follow. Uh, take what we've gone through that you either like the most or that you feel like you understood the most as we went through it. And I would dive into those things deeper first, uh, to be hundred percent honest with you. Like everyone might, you might be like, Oh, I need to learn all the things that I don't know. I disagree. Um, there's a lot on this list that I'm not amazing at. And I, again, I've been doing this for a while. Whoa, what's up all for that is a lot of people. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the sun. Uh, what's what's today? Month two, the Tuesday night uh, raid. Let me let everyone get through that. Uh, get through those initial things here. All F four stream. That's dope. That's the that you might have to go on the uh, historic board. That's the biggest raid by far that we've had so far. I think before this, the number was like thirty one or thirty two. How you doing? Do you, what were you guys going over tonight? Are we streaming something tonight? Um, yeah, I'd love to know more. Let me check out your channel. Shout out to All F four. Let me uh let me pull you up over here. Was it the everyone here already knows that I'm terrible at typing, so I'm gonna have to type your name in at least six times. Uh at least six times for me to get this right. But appreciate it. How 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 are you doing tonight? What um what were you guys doing over on your channel tonight? I'm gonna give you I'm getting over here and giving you a follow now. Everyone give Alt F4 a follow. I hope that you do not do any lewd streaming that I didn't know about, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, just give you a follow. That's pretty dope. Pretty dope. Thank you for the follow. What's up, uh, RHMU83 and whoever's about his name is about to show up next. My thing is a little bit behind. I'll give you a shout out when your name shows up. We have been, uh, we are on week 11 of a DevOps uh, introduction to DevOps bootcamp. Uh, DevOps is a pretty sprawling subject. Um, and so we've kind of used this roadmap.sh uh, as, our, as our introduction to uh, to DevOps to, to kind of get us started. So I'm a DevOps engineer. Um, that is what I do for a day job. Um, yeah, we've kind of just been running through this, learning the major sections here. So we learned a little bit about programming. Uh, so we did Go. We did, Go is kind of the language that I like the most. Uh, and a lot of DevOps tools are written in Go. So we learned a lot about Go. So you can go back and watch those. Everything is actually in a playlist on YouTube if anyone is interested in this stuff. Uh, we are. This will also be, uh, we're actually going to be running three 12 week boot camps throughout the year uh, that kind of get a little more advanced each time. Uh, so, th so as this one ends, we will still be streaming during that, like during doing other topics but we will be getting into more of these so uh, more information will be coming out about that but uh we went through that we learned go we learned some os concepts we did a lot with linux we did a lot with the command line we did a lot with uh managing linux servers how to you know tell what processes are running killing processes figuring out how much memory is still around how much disk space things like that learning how to install packages learning how to install things from source we did all that during this part got pretty good at that um, learn about the distributions, etc. Learn a little bit about networking. So remember how I just said, I, I just said you don't need to become an expert on everything on this list. Know a little bit about it. This is my weakest area. Um, and that is something I need to focus on. Um, networking, security and protocols. I know a, a fair amount about it, but I'm not, I'm not a good, uh, I don't have a really, really good handle on networking. I find it to be the most intimidating out of all the things on here. Um, but like I said, if you found something on this list that we got to that you liked a lot, dive into what you liked or to what you understood first, if this is kind of your first foray into these things. Um, uh, but yeah, we learned, we learned a lot about these different protocols and kind of uh, how they worked. Um, you know, uh, different ports, different protocols, how to interact with them. 
Uh, we learned how to set up a reverse proxy with Nginx, uh, load balancing with Nginx, firewalls, uh, web servers. We did. We even set up a web server tonight. Um, even, well, we just installed a web server. We didn't set it up tonight. Uh, Express is also a web server. So the thing serving right now is actually a JavaScript web server. Um, uh, we learned some infrastructure as code. So that's when we got into the exciting DevOpsy stuff. So we learned how to spin up infrastructure via code. So Terraform is what we focused on. We spun up the server that we're using tonight via Terraform. Uh, learned a lot about containers, Docker, Kubernetes. Uh, they didn't put uh, Docker Compose on here because again, it is a, uh, it's more of a local uh, development tool. Uh, but we learned a lot about that. Uh, we learned about configuration management with Ansible. Uh, learned last the last stream actually we learned a little bit about how these things work um we learned we use circle ci that is one of the purple ones which is good i like to see that uh but they've got four purple ones here there's a lot of ci tools out there again github actions is pretty cool i haven't gotten it to work yet but i'm sure it's great tonight we learned about uh observability and learning how to monitor this stuff we used uh, datadog i've never used datadog before but we were actually able to get that set up no problem um, we were able to see our services and you can see our requests per second have gone up, um, which is great, even though we're getting a bunch of errors, not sure we're getting a bunch of errors, but no big deal there. And the last thing we got here is uh, cloud providers. We learned, we took, uh, four classes in AWS, um, to kind of get started there. If anyone's interested in AWS in March, uh, the new the next series of boot camps, we are doing a cloud computing boot camp, a purely cloud computing boot camp with AWS. Um, so it'll really give you enough to pass. Uh, it will give you enough to pass associate level exams. So if you're trying to do that, um, if you, if you want to learn about cloud computing, those will start in May, actually the first week of May. So it was it May 4th, uh, is when we'll start, uh, going through those things, but more information will come out about that. Uh, but we'll also be doing a significant amount of, uh, cloud stuff in the part two of this AWS bootcamp, if you're interested, but yeah, that's a lot next week we have, um, Again, for everyone who's new, next week we're going to be doing uh, an engineering panel. So on Sunday, we're going to be uh, interviewing some DevOps engineers um, to know, just to kind of talk about, you know, very openly what we're doing, like like your your journey into the industry. You know, ask whatever questions you have. Journeys in the industry, uh, how, what you do every day. You know, what people think, like where people think the industry is going. What tools you should learn. Um, it's going to be great. Um, and then we're going to be learning about how to, you know, approach the, the DevOps interview process. How do you show off the skills that you learned here? Um, if anyone's interested in that stuff, everyone who just came through, that was a long overview of what it is that we've been doing. Um, all, we're also running concurrently with this, a Python coding bootcamp. We're finishing up with that, uh, this week as well. Um, and then we're going to be doing the same thing there. There will be a software, uh, panel, um, and, and cracking the code interview we're building, uh, we're doing some web scripting project right now, um, in the Python bootcamp. So that is on Mondays and Wednesdays. If you're interested in that, uh, email list, interesting. I need to set up an email list. I do not uh, have an email list, uh, to, to know what uh, gets updated. Uh, you can follow me on any social media platform. Uh, and they're all at mastermind IO. So mastermind IO Twitter is probably the best place. Um, and then this website, which is Academy that mastermind I, people have at lots of people have asked me about uh, an email list. I'll definitely be setting that up pretty soon. Um, we're just trying to wait till the end of these, uh, these boot camps are done next week. Um, so yeah, so like I, I'll have some time then to do it. Like I said, I do have a day job for now. I do have a day job for now. Um, but there's, there's more information about that. Another two things Saturday. Um, if anyone's interested, uh, Saturday, uh, we don't, we don't normally stream on Saturday, but Saturday we're doing, if anyone's interested in Docker, uh, I, I love teaching Docker, but for all the people who have been displaced, all the meetups, there's a Baltimore, um, code and coffee meetup here. Uh, that's usually run out of the building that I'm in here. Um, and I am, um, they asked me to help them run a virtual meetup for them, uh, to kind of learn and teach something. So on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., we're doing a bit of a super meetup um, and we're trying to get meetups from all over to kind of tune in. Um, you can you'll be able to plug your meetup, uh, but we'll, we'll just learn a little bit. We'll learn 
we will learn a lot about Docker. We're gonna be um, going from kind of zero to hero, getting it installed, understanding how to build containers via Docker files, learning the terminology. Uh, we'll get all the way up to using Docker Compose to kind of set up uh, multi-container uh, development environments because a lot of people there are software developers. So. If that's you, if you've wanted to learn Docker for a long time, uh, been interested in how that works, come on through. Also, if you just want to talk to some other people who are stuck in the house just like you, um, we'll, we'll be we'll be setting up a forum for that. Um, I have a I have a paid Zoom account, so maybe we'll have people hop on the Zoom as well. If you kind of if you want to talk to some people, see people's faces, have some conversations as well while we're going through the, these things, I think that'll be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, there should be should be a lot of people on there um, on Saturday. And the last announcement, very last announcement, if you are interested in watching how a project, uh, I guess in the, everyone nowadays is talking about agile software development. So we we did DevOps here for 12 weeks. Um, we're, you know, we're doing software development in the Python course. Uh, but if you ever wanna see how that works kind of real time, how the whole process works, not just the tech piece of it, the whole process. So agile software development from the very beginning. So we're talking about, um, I haven't written all up here, but like how to go from the, the, the inception of the idea to the actual product. We're gonna do it in a week and we're gonna do it live, uh, like during work hours. So I know, everyone's everyone's home everyone doesn't have the access to just sit there and watch us all day but we're going to be doing it all day but we're going to be doing you know how to manage the project we'll, we'll we'll learn about agile and scrum we'll learn about uh product development and kind of how to manage a product product ownership uh things like that we'll learn how to break down the process uh you know in the user stories and things like that and to to bite-sized pieces to be completed we'll go through all the little ceremonies. So we'll do daily sprints. So like usually sprints are a week or two, um, you know, maybe more, um, but we're gonna be doing daily sprints where we do a daily stand up. Uh, we talk about, you know, uh, where we are and kind of what's blocking us and things like that. You'll see us work pretty collaboratively. We're building an open source platform, which I will soon, very soon announce. We've talked about it on here before. Uh, I've brought it up a couple times, but we're building an open source platform that we can take after that um, and everyone can participate. So we're even though we're going to be heading up the starting of it, like this is going to be an opportunity for other people to submit PRs and work with us uh, live throughout the week. And again, there'll be plenty of opportunity because we'll be here literally all day doing it. Um, but it should be fun. It should be. I think it's going to be a fun experience. It's not going to be as it's not going to be as like like hardcore and prescriptive as maybe this is. And this is not even hardcore prescriptive, but we're trying to get through something in two hours here. That's not going to be the case next week. Uh, we're going to be talking through the things as we're going through them. We're going to be uh, allowing allowing everyone to kind of be the arbiters of the product itself and determine the features and things that we want for the MVP and past that. Um, yeah, it's definitely, this is not, it's not hardcore, but we are trying to solve, we are trying to get to an end state each night. Um, and that may not be the case. It's going to be much more chill, uh, especially cause it's going to be all day. Uh, you're not going to be sitting here just listening to me talk all the time. It will be me and Terrence, uh, and other people. We will have a, we're going to have a scrum master, um, who's going to, who's going to work, uh, walk us through all this. Uh, hopefully we're hoping to have a product manager come and kind of talk about, uh, that aspect of things. Um, but I don't know, just giving people a full scope in a week, in a week's time frame while everyone's at home, give you the opportunity to catch some of it um, and participate in some of it when you can. Uh, no big if you can't, but just letting you guys know about something we're going to do next week. It should be pretty fun. Uh, we do have a name for it now. Uh, drum roll, please. Just like T-Bell said, just like Terrence said, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, T-Bell on here is Terrence. He's in, he's a software extraordinaire, and he's usually in here uh, helping me, specifically on software days. Software people don't like DevOps stuff, so they kind of stay away. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's their, it's their kryptonite a little bit. Um, but we're quarantined, so this is going to be called... Operation Quarantine. Yeah, I know you like that. I know you like it. We are going to be a team together. Operation Quarantine. No, come on, come on, come on. It's perfect. You can't unsub for that. You can't unsub for that. It's perfect. You loved it. It sounded so good. When we thought of it, we were like, that's it. It's perfect. I mean, come on. There's you, alliterations help so we were trying to we were trying to do some alliterations but you know like quarantine like there's not that many keywords it was like quarantine quorum it's like uh no a quorum is a very interesting word that doesn't really fit this but you could him like it, it's stupid 
It is the uh, yeah, quarantine. I love it. It looks even better when it's typed out. Project Quarantine. It's so good. And it should be sponsored by LaCroix. I like that. Uh, we, we're going to say it's sponsored by LaCroix until LaCroix actually sponsors it. Uh, but it should be fun. It's going to be a fun time. Everything else will still go on. So we will still do uh, all of the the things about um, all the boot camp stuff will still go on next week. Uh, so it's going to be a long day for us. But um, yeah, all that stuff will still go on. So. Tune in when you can, like if you're just at home and you want something in your ear on the side, we'll be doing that. But like, we also won't just be playing games all day. You'll see you'll see what a day is really like. Um, I'll really try to model it off of how I generally work um, so that you'll see the breaks that I take and the stuff that I do during my breaks and things like that as well. Like, I just think that's gonna be fun and important for people to see who are really just trying to get an insight on the industry. I think this is a, this is a prime opportunity to kind of show some of those things. Uh, but also like have people learn at the same time. What's up, Cophobia? How are you doing tonight? You guys like you guys like quarantine. It's gonna grow on you. It's definitely gonna grow on you. Was apocalypse shopping? All good, all good, Adam. Um, I still gotta get you. I we gotta figure out what we're gonna do for the um, for the panels. Um, it'll probably be just Zoom now. We were gonna do it in person. I'll see if the people who are willing to, we can still meet in groups of less than 10 um, and we can spread out a little bit. So if people still wanna come in and do that, maybe we'll still do it in person, but if not, all good. Ask for sponsorship and a new team name. Let's do it. Contact us, we're doing, we're doing it right now, actually. We're doing it live. Let's do it live. Uh, so anyone who's new, we are trying to get a LaCroix sponsorship. We've got the Pamplemousse LaCroix here. We've got the lime. We think that uh, the, there's no better person to help uh, uplift and support the tech industry than LaCroix. Uh, and so let's do it live. Let's let's ask for this live while people are watching. Make a selection. Uh, sponsorship and donations. Oh, this is excellent. They have it. They, they made this for us. They made this for us. So product donation request, sponsorship request. Oh man, this is, thank you. Thank you, Blast7. First off, your trolling is uh, a, a value part of this channel and your contributions like this are also a value part of this channel. We appreciate you. This is great. I love this. Uh, eight marketplace. You guys already know where I am. I tell you guys where I am all the time. I don't care about telling you my location. You see this? These are registered weapons, so if you try to come bother me, it'd be weird. I'll stop you. you. Can't hurt me. And there's and there's uh you gotta swipe to get in, so boom, you can't bother me like that. And like if you just want to come up and chill, I'm also cool with that. But they're gonna email me. Now you know my number. That is my uh not my personal number, so don't feel bad. That's the only this is the only uh Google uh voice number that I could get. So feel free. It's gonna be on it's on it's on my business cards and on my email uh signature anyway. So not a big deal. Give me a call or text if you want. I might respond, I might not. Remarks. What are we gonna say about ourselves? What are we gonna say about ourselves? So hello. Comma. Just so you know. There are 68 plus people helping me submit this at this time. Hmm. Every night, we're gonna tell a story now. And we're gonna, hold on, let's get some music going. Let's get some, uh, let's get some epic, uh, some epic like voiceover music, epic movie soundtracks. Here we go. It'll be better as we type it. I take it LaCroix is already a big part of the stream. Um, they're not <laughs> there. I, I, I've been just drinking LaCroix because where, where in this building, they are heavily available and I'm on a weight loss journey and it helped me to drink these instead of regular water. Um, but yeah, there we go. I like, the, oh, this is, this is, oh, this is perfect. I'm gonna copy this in a second. This will go in here. This will go in. Let's put this, I mean, how many characters do I have? What well, does it matter? I don't see character limit yet. Why isn't the, this is not an epic soundtrack. Here we go. 
nope, before I do anything, I have to get an epic movie soundtrack to, to do this to. Time by Hans Zimmer from, uh, is it called Time or is it called 10 Hours of Time? Here we go. We got ourselves a, I, so I have a, I have YouTube premium, but I also have like four different accounts. Okay, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Let's turn this bad boy up. Get ready. We're gonna we're gonna slow roll this one. Uh huh. I'm gonna make it real loud. Yeah, there we go. All right. Come on, Lacroix. Tonight we're writing to you because we think you can be a big help to us. So, 68 plus of us submitting this at this time. Every night, or at least uh, four nights a week. Our community attempts to break down the barriers of the tech industry. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we do, right? That's of the tech industry. We love your product. I like this. Thank you, Blast 7. We love your product and we want to help promote it on all the Mastermind IO streams. I consume mass quantities of your tasty beverage every night on the stream. There's simply no way. We'll fix typos at the end. There's simply no way that we would be able to do this without the hydration your product provides. I like it. I like it so far. You know, making making sure they really understand uh, how important their product is. Synergy for the masses, not just the berry flavor. I'm not a huge fan of berry, but I love lime. Uh, let's see. So, so you know, just, community attempts to break down barriers in the tech industry spelled wrong there we go right click fix it up we love your product and we want to help you promote it on the mastermind io stream i consume mass quantities of your tasty beverage every night every single night maybe it's the perfect time to Ooh. lime so good there's simply no way that we'd be able to do this without you without the hydration your product provides. It's probably a bad, a poorly placed comma. Okay. The music got low. The music got low. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till it gets back to the high point. Cause I did in fact click on the 10 hour version of this. I can still hear it. I can still hear it going. It can build back up and during this time we can figure out what we want to say next. Our favorites are lime and lemon, but not combined. I, oh, I, blah seven. I, oh yes. Yes, our favorites are lime and lemon, but not combined. So we have tried that. Lemon and lime do not make Sprite as you may, uh, you may believe. It doesn't follow the same logic that you learned when you were a child, you know, the same logic that, you know, when you mix, uh, what is it, yellow and, and blue, you get green, um, things like that. Uh, it, 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 the math doesn't add up. I, I don't know if it's the transitive properties of addition uh, don't quite apply here. Don't sweat it if that's the wrong property. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, but we do know uh, there are other combinations of flavors that are good. Uh, and there are other flavors that are just amazing. I really want to commend LaCroix on some of the flavors like passion fruit. Passion fruit is a phenomenal flavor. It goes with lots of different food items in the evening. Uh, lime, again, is also good. Lime and coconut also do not give you a uh, a, a Coke flavor, um, as they shouldn't. But um, 
the essence that they give is, uh, I, I think the lime is a little overpowering to be 100% honest with you. Maybe we need to work on the ratios, but yeah. Um, we, we, we've learned a lot about using this product, but not combined. What else you got from me, Blast 7? You're, you're killing it out here. Um, let's see. We're out to change the world of tech with your help. Let's see. What we've learned is we can't do it alone. We're out to I'm gonna take to change the world of tech. We're out to change the world of tech with your help. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. All right. Let's see. There's no substitute. <laughs> the, the Kirkland stuff isn't good. That's very true. That's on two steps from hell. But okay. All right. I'll do that. Um, let's see what we got. Hold on, let's 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 take it back to a high point. Let's 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 read it out. A mouse. Right to the build up. Oh, that's already going. Okay, let's read it out and let's see what it uh see what it sounds like. Hello. Actually, we got to keep it consistent, and we have to do sirs and or madams. I think we spelled this wrong every single time because it's not supposed to be. We'll just add an S on there. Ah, nope, nope. You know that's 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 gender binary, and gender is not binary. So we're not gonna make. We're not gonna upset anyone. We're not gonna upset anyone. You know, keep it keep it really simple. Hello. Nope. We're just gonna say hello. Hello. Just to let you know. There are 68 plus people helping me submit this at this time. Every night, at least, or at least four nights a week. That is the wrong week. Wow, that was bad. Our community, let's make it a little bit bigger so everyone can see. Our community attempts to break down the barriers of the tech industry. We love your product and we want to help you promote it on the Mastermind IO stream. I consume mass quantities of your tasty beverage every night on the stream. Ah, there's simply no way that we will be able to do this without the hydration your product provides. Our favorites are lime and lemon, but not combined. What we've learned is that we can't do it alone. We're out to change the world of tech with your help. I like that. That sounds really, really good. Um, that sounds really good. Let's see. I'm also open to product placement on the stream as well as continuing to let my audience know LaCroix is the official beverage of choice. Oh, 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 oh this is, I, 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 I oh, that's good. I like this. I'm going to remove the soul is for change the world. Let's see. Correction, change the world. I don't get it. Oh no, we got an ad? Ah, oh, rest of my flow. I do like, I don't want to say that my soul is for sale, but it feels, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove that part, but I like this. No, 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 we're, we're, no, we're going to leave it as is. We're going to make them feel something. We don't want to pull them out of that feeling. We don't want to pull them out of that feeling. That, that ad was a sign for me not to put that in there. All right, I think that's good enough for now. I think this will be great. Excuse me, the Lacroix. Uh, you know, they made me made me burp a little bit there. Okay, I think this is good. I think we've made major progress tonight together. I'm proud of us. This is this journey. This journey. It feels like this journey is almost complete. I, I like this. Let's send it off. Let me get the song queued up. Let's see what song are we doing. Two steps from hell. I'm in. All right. Oh yes, I do know this song actually, because I listen to way more uh, epic movie things than you should probably do. Let's get it going. What? Where's the? What movie was this in originally? Hmm. 
educated quarantine. Oh, okay. You're right. I have to do that. I have to do that. Our papers on the line. Not combined. In Georgia Tech. Um, where should I put that? Where's a good spot to like throw that in there? Ooh, this is great. I like the song already. Hmm. Where should I put that? We love your product. Not only. Not only. Uh, hmm. I really like that. You're risking your health and life by going through the streets. All right. All right. Nope. No, nope, we're just we're going to leave it as is. We're going to I, I like where you're going with this. I do. I do like where you're going with this. I think we can appeal by uh, by just uh, going off of our, our merits here. Uh, I don't think we need to embellish, uh, even though even though we're educating quarantine children. Um, yes. Tell them <laughs> tell them to help you help them. OK. All right. First off, I would like to make you uh, the, my, my sponsorship ambassador. Uh, we will be asking for more sponsorships, and I will be using uh, I will be using exactly the things that you tell me. Uh, but for this first one, we'll keep it chill. We've got our victory song playing. Let's go ahead and let's hit submit. Oh, that felt good. Wait. Oh, I have to I have to confirm it first. Make sure everything's good. There's probably some typos in there. You know I got these fat fingers. It's okay. It's okay. Everything looks good. The right email. They just need to know how to contact me. Excellent. This is nice. This is excellent. Confirm. We did it. Block seven. You got this off the ground. You gave us a significant amount of the content. We can't go on without first clapping it up for Block seven. We accept your trolling. We accept uh, your help. You're you are you are a vibrant member of this community, and we appreciate you. So thank you. I, hey, you do you you entertain me, and I appreciate that. We we you're always always welcome. Excellent. That was a great. That was man. This feels good. Victory. I love this. This feels so good. It feels so right. Thank you everyone for another great stream. Um, the only reason I, I would I would do some other things. There's some other things that I actually want to do, but this kind of wraps up 11 weeks of hard fought DevOps uh, learning. Again, there's constantly going to be more and more, um, but you should be proud of yourself. If you made it through, um, even if you joined late, whenever you joined, be proud of yourself. Be proud that you're, we've taken this journey together. I've learned a lot in this process. I hope that you've learned a lot in the process as well. It's not over with, obviously, this is not the last week. Um, but again, it's last of the technical stuff. Um, whoops. Let's get the light back on. Um, yeah, besides that, I need to get off so that I can finally get out the information that we were trying to get out about everything that we're doing next week, about Operation Quarantine. You heard it here first. You're part of Operation Quarantine. So uh, try, we're trying to get out information about that, hopefully releasing it tomorrow might record a little short video to kind of really explain what we're doing. Uh, and there should be a page up on our website about it tomorrow. If you just want some information about what it is that we're actually building again, it's going to be an open source application that everyone can contribute to, but I love it. This has been great. Who's online tonight. First off, also while you're home, uh, while everyone's home, uh, there are a lot, I found that there's a lot of people streaming now. Um, and not, and not that like we should be like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hype up, streaming just because I'm doing streaming, but I think, there's a, I think there's a lot of people offering up a lot of great information now um, during this time since everyone's at home. So I think take advantage of that, like find people who have, who are giving away the information for you that you need uh, to kind of take yourself to the next level. It doesn't need to be in tech. Uh, it could be someone who's teaching you how to be amazing at the video game that you want to be good at. But I don't know. I think during this time, a lot of people are uh, putting their energies into things like that, sharing with the community, sharing with the world. Go out and find that thing that uh, kind of makes you happy that you can, you know, uh, you know, add to yourself, you know, grow a little bit during this time if you can um, or just take this time to relax. I, I get that as well. Like this is for some people, this is the perfect time to uh, get their energy back. But cool. That's it for me. That's it for tonight. Uh, let's see who's online. We usually um, almost every stream we go ahead and we raid someone who's online. Um, I. 
what's interesting about tonight is there's a lot of people who I don't know because there's so many new people streaming, which is nice. Um, so does anyone have first, does anyone have any recommendations of places we should go? We could go to our chicken life. Do a search for LaCroix. I like it. I like it. Do a search for LaCroix. Um, the, well, that's that didn't. There's no one live. Uh, there's no one live. There is a, there's a surprising amount of people with LaCroix in their name. Um, uh, oh, that does. Maybe we should. Uh, oh, man. Tim Bidet. Okay, let's let's check let's check those people out. Okay, I think we or Jitsupe. That person's doing 3D modeling. This person's doing game day level tweaks, Calo creation. Cool. Let's. All right, um, out of those three, someone uh, out of the three that uh, Ryumu just put in there, Tim B B Baldet, Baldet, or Jits Pose, or Kyle Creation, someone just throw out a, someone just throw out one of those three, again, just to just vote on one of those three real quick. First one I see is where we're gonna go. Uh, looks like Kyle Creation's doing uh, Twitch IRC for Unity and a Twitter bot. Um, Tim. Cool. Whoa, well, Tim came in first. Sorry, Uno playing. Uh, but then uh, I said I was going to do the first one. But then I got. Uh, then I got two for Callow. And now I feel bad. I got three for Callow. I'm sorry. I, I am. I'm sorry, Elon Mask. I did say first person, but we are going to head over and we are going to raid. Uh, Tim. Oh, no, Callow. <laughs> Whoops, I almost messed that up. I almost went against the vote. We are going to Ray Callow. All right, everybody, have a good night. I will be back on tomorrow with uh, some Python, uh, finishing out uh, Python web scraping project. Um, yeah, let's go over there. Let's have a party. So we got 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, everybody, let's go have this raid party over here.